Hello, today we're looking at graph sketching. Okay. And in particular, we're going to try and use some of the ideas of de derivatives or techniques that we can, techniques that involve the derivative of a function. So our question is to sketch the following function. So f of x equals x to the power six over six minus two x to the power four plus eight x squared plus one. Okay, so let's start by taking the derivative and, and we'll go from there. So let's, okay, so f prime is six x to the power five over six minus eight x cubed plus 16 x. Okay, so let's, let's factor this. Um, okay. So here our goal, the common factor of x is, I think our goal here is to find our critical numbers. I think that's the first step. That's the, the best way to start. Okay, so we factor, let's see if we can factor this x to the power four minus eight x squared plus 16. Hmm. I think we can. So actually, it is a perfect square. And each of these is also a perfect square, not a perfect square, a difference of squares. Each of the, each of the factors is, is a difference of squares and uh, the original quad, a fourth degree polynomial is a perfect square. So we actually have x minus two times x plus two and squared. Okay, so we factored our, sorry, rather we, we factored the derivative of our function. So now if we set it equal to zero, we can find the critical numbers, which are equals zero, two, and negative two. So what should we call these? Our critical, critical numbers. Okay, so now, um, we're gonna take a look at the second derivative and see if we can do something with that. So I think it's easier to take the second derivative from this stage rather than rather than after we factored everything. So we're gonna take the derivative of x to the power five minus eight x cubed plus 16 x and that equals five x to the power four minus 24 x squared plus 16. So now we can plug in our critical numbers into our second derivative to determine the concavity of our function at that point. So when x equals zero, our second derivative equals 16, which is greater than zero, so concave up. The function is concave up at x equals zero. So most likely a minimum at x equals zero. Now, I checked this a couple of times and it looks like when x equals two, our second derivative is actually equal to zero. I'll just write it out. Just plugging two into our second derivative and that actually equals zero. Similarly, when x equals negative two, our second derivative is also equal to zero. Okay. So it looks like we have inflection points when x equals two and when x equals negative two. Okay, so then what are we gonna do? Why don't we look at how the derivative changes on these intervals? So we're gonna draw a number line. We have our critical our critical numbers. And we're gonna look at, let's write out the factors of our first derivative. And then we have the product of these three factors is our first derivative. And from here, we can determine whether the first derivative is positive or negative. This will give us an idea of if our functions increasing or decreasing what it looks like visually. So obviously when X is less than zero, it's going to be positive. When it's greater than zero, it's gonna be 
oh, it's, sorry, when x is less than zero, it's going to be negative. And when x is greater than zero, it's going to be positive. Each of these other terms, x minus two all squared, x plus two all squared, whether it's positive, whether the x value is negative or positive, the factor itself is always going to be positive because we're, we're taking the square of the factor x minus two or x plus two. So we're always going to get a positive value. This means our our derivative is negative when x is less than zero and positive when x is greater than zero. Okay. So we've kind of established that at x equals zero, it looks like we have a minimum. So let's see if we can sketch. Oh, we run out of room. Okay. Let's make it a little smaller. Let's move over to the right. Use some of this information. Okay. So let's Let's draw a little, okay, how about this? Okay, so when x, we have it when x is zero, x is negative two, and when x is two. So if we look at our function, our, let's see, our x, our y-intercept is actually one, it's one. So that's some kind of minimum value we've established. So our function is increasing on the interval. Um, our, it, sorry, our function is concave up when x equals zero. Um, it is decreasing the derivative, sorry, is negative when x is less than zero, positive when x is greater than zero. And that does kind of look like what's happening. And when x is negative two, it looks like we have some sort of, we have some kind of inflection point. So it looks like the concavity is going to change at those points. So that's a rough sketch of what our function looks like. Good. Okay, excellent. So we've sketched our function and we use some of the properties of derivatives and tests that we can, we can, we can do using the first and second derivatives and then looking at this chart for the sign of the derivative on different intervals to give us an idea of what's happening to our function and how it's changing. And then finally, we can sketch our graph. Good, so that brings us to the end of our session today. If you have any questions, give us a shout at info at raisedbymarks.com or give us a call day or evening and we'll be happy to help you. Thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing you again soon.